Are you still wondering why your image is so blurry? That's because you're working on a raster image. What's up guys, it's Jim from Illustrator How. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about the difference between a raster and a vector image. If that sounds interesting to you, please keep watching this video. Okay, so you all know that Adobe Illustrator is a vector-based program. So what is exactly a vector image? I know there are a lot of official answers, but I'm going to make it easier for you to understand. A vector image is basically made by points and paths, so usually they are simpler than a raster image. Now you might have the question, what is a raster image? A raster image is actually made by pixels. So the biggest difference between a vector and a raster image is that when you scale a vector image, you are not going to change the resolution. However, when you scale a raster image, for example, if you uh, zoom in or make it larger, you will see the pixelated part of the image. Here is a quick example. As you can see, the ice cream on the left is a vector image and the ice cream on the right is a raster image. I know you are not going to see the difference looking at them right now since they are pretty small. However, if you open the image in Illustrator, if you click on it, you can see the path they are kind of selected, which can help you tell that this is a vector image. However, if you select the ice cream on the right, if you click on that, you will see a bounding box, which is uh, a raster image because it's uh, not selecting the path or anchor point. That's a way to tell whether an image is vector or raster in Illustrator. Another way to differentiate this is to zoom in. So as you can see, the ice cream on the right already start to get a little bit blurry and pixelated. And if you just zoom in a little bit more, you will see the pixels here. However, if you just move it left, you will see the clear lines of the vector image. Difference number one, a vector image will keep the same image resolution when you scale it and when you scale a raster image, the resolution does not stay the same. And then difference number two, a vector image is much smaller than a raster image. Since a raster image usually is more complex, it has more colors or it has more uh, elements or compositions. Okay, so I know it sounds like a vector image is much better than raster. Is that true? I mean, it really depends on what you are using. For example, if you want to work with photography or really complex images, you are most likely to work with a raster image. However, Illustrator is probably not the best program to do it, or you might want to use Photoshop to uh, handle raster images. It's very easy to convert a vector image into a raster. You can simply do it by saving the image as a raster format. However, if you want to turn a raster image into a vector, it's a little bit more complicated because you do need to trace the outline recreate the artwork. I do have a couple of tutorials showing you how to vectorize an, uh, a raster image in Illustrator. If you're interested, you can find the links in the description below. All right, so some of the commonly used vector files, they are Adobe Illustrator file, AI file, which is commonly used in print media and digital graphics, obviously. So for example, if you create logos, you are most likely going to save it as an AI file. Then we also have EPS or PDF file. PDF is super useful if you want to exchange documents across platforms. And we have the SVG file, which stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. Now, some commonly used vector files are JPEG, PNG, and the GIF images. So I know some of you might get so confused about the PNG format since I know sometimes we save the logo as a PNG since it have a transparent background. However, a PNG file is not a vector. So this is a note that you should be taking. All right, so hopefully now you already know the difference between a vector image and a raster image. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to give me a thumb up and hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of my future videos. If you want to learn more about Illustrator basics, I do have an Illustrator beginners course, which you can find the link in the description below. 